Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I am trying out another collaboration with with Paul Rubens this time. They sent me some watercolours to try out. They actually sent me two of them because the first one I received actually came a bit damaged. So as you can see the box is a little broken. The inside tin was a bit beat up and it actually came missing a pen and paintbrush. I spoke to my representative. Amazon sent me a previously returned set, which is why it's damaged. They sent me another one that actually arrived in pristine condition and it is lovely. Here you can see me unboxing it. It comes with a fine liner pen, which um, is quite a nice medium size. It also comes with a, a pencil. It says it's just an H, so I, I've never heard of just an H, but yeah, it's quite a nice pencil. As well as a paintbrush and this weird sponge thing. It's, I believe it's set to be like a travel watercolor set. Um, and it, I mean, it, it's really cute. It's really nice size. It comes with these sheets of watercolour paper as well. The paints themselves had these little hairs on it as I just showed you which I'm, I'm not entirely sure I think that's where it came from the factory as well as a swatch sheet so you know I have to <laughs> fill that out. Initially I was going to cover over the entire word as you saw by the first one but these these are quite pigmented so I changed my mind. This swatch sheet was surprising. I was so surprised by how rich and pigmented all of the colours turned out. Um, I was so happy with it as well because um, I haven't used watercolours in a long time. This is another <laughs> another art product for a video that I haven't used in a long time so I'm very rusty. Um, and for some reason my memory of watercolours is that they are always like really watered down and desaturated. I think that's probably just how I personally used to use it. Um, and this set comes with a lot of colours as well as two like metallics. Here is gold and silver and I was pleasantly surprised. In a previous video I mentioned how metallic things don't usually intrigue me because they always come out really kind of gross but I was really surprised by these came out shiny and I wonder if it's watercolour is just like the key for metallics. Anyway to get a handle on using these because I haven't used them in a while I decided to test out on the little sheets that come with the set um, and I also decided it would be a good way to test if the pencil and the pen would be smudged at all by the watercolour. I was really surprised because as far as I'm aware the pen isn't advertised as being waterproof but in this whole video it never once bleeds or smudges so that is a win because you can you know watercolour pens are extremely helpful when it comes to things like this because they also it means they don't usually smudge with other mediums as well so for this page i just decided to do some random drawings one is of my girl cara another is of a beetle because i've been into bugs for some reason um and then a pikachu and a mantike I always forget what that Pokemon's called, but they're one of my favourites. I really should learn their name. And I just thought it'd be a fun way to just test out some styles. So I then go over them with the pen because, again, it, it is surprisingly a waterproof pen. Uh, I'm going to feel crazy. I'm going to feel stupid if um, it turns out it is advertised as waterproof and I'm just, like, gushing over it. But it is it's nice. It's really nice to know that it is because it means I don't have to worry about the pencil dirtying up any of the watercolours and I don't have to worry about losing the lines. I, I do have to go over the lines again at the end because watercolour, you know, you are putting something over the pen still so it kind of dampens. No, it it weakens the pen. It makes, it fades it. It does affect the pen but I think that's the case with every waterproof pen. Anyway, with Kara, I mm, kind of mixed on it because initially her skin colour came out looking perfect but then obviously it is watercolour so the colour does fade eventually and I end up going over her skin again with this really dark blue that I thought was the same blue I used initially but I'm not sure, I think it must have been a different one and it came out really dark and I could have lightened it if I'd kept adding water I suppose but um, it just looks kind of messy now <laughs> and I kind of wish I'd just left it although her skin was very pale so she did kind of need it. The adding the line art at the end did fix it a bit so I'm not too mad about it. So yeah what it was a really good thing that I did this test because if you know me I am quite impatient when it comes to colouring things in 
and with watercolour obviously you should ideally wait for things to dry which um, I'm not the best at so as you saw with some of the Cara um, colouring and not so much with the bug because it was more deliberate but um, when the colours weren't dry they would bleed into each other and just make it a whole mess. It happened with Cara's horns I think, I think I did manage to fix them and then with her furthest arm. Yeah, I'm glad I did this because it did remind me I really need to wait to let things dry. Um, and I do encounter this problem a little bit later, but not as bad because I am trying to be more conscious of it. Um, so yeah, after adding the line art, I was very happy with how they all turned out and I love how the Pokemon turned out. So for today's video, I decided to revisit an old idea of my alien camel desert OC character here. Um, I drew him a while ago, I think it was back in 2020, and I thought it would be cute because that original picture was also using watercolour, so I thought it would be kind of like a cute comparison to see how things have changed. So here I am just planning out a page of thumbnails of ideas of what I want to do because I do want it to be kind of like the same pose because I do, I really like how that pose turned out. The composition of it just sparks something that I, I really like. I do think it's also because it's on a plain background and I don't end up doing that. I colour the background from the get-go. Here I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do with it because it has been a little while since I last drew this character. I think it was sometime last year maybe. Um, and so things have changed with him. He has had some like added features. So I drew a day and night version which kind of have both separate things that um, each version of him has, I guess I'm trying to say. Um, I also was trying to debate if I wanted to include the cute little creature that is on the far left of this page. He is like this chinchilla kind of lemur hamster thingy, I don't know. It's an alien planet so these aren't, these are made up creatures obviously. Um, and I, unfortunately I don't end up including him because it just felt like it would be too crowded and my final product ends up being a version of the original one because I really like the parasol umbrella thing he has and I thought that would look really nice. And Paul Rubens were kind enough to also send me some of their watercolour paper so um, that would be nice to try out as well because I don't actually think I have any watercolour paper of my own. Um, and so I start by sticking it onto the back of um, an old sketchbook sketch pad thing just because I could tape it down to the table, but I am so slow when it comes to watercolour things that it's just handy to have something that I can just put aside if I want. And this is something that I do a lot in the past when I've used watercolours. I usually stick them to the back of this book and it, it's like, it's something simple, but it just seems to be like a really handy trick that um, I recommend. Obviously, I think most people use like actual wooden boards for their watercolour stuff, but you know, the back of a sketchbook works fine apparently. So here you can see me sketching it out and just finessing it a little bit. Um, I have the original picture as a constant reference to the side of my workspace. Um, that's what I'm using and going in and adding extra details as well as some updated things. Like he has the sort of gauntlet ring finger things on his hand that's holding the umbrella that I added like when I did one of his redraws. I might throw the picture up on the screen. Um, I have posted all these things on my Instagram before, but it was so long ago that you'd really have to go trekking for it. And yeah, it was really nice going in and adding all the details that had been there previously because in the past I used to really struggle adding details because it just seemed like, what am I meant to add? So now that I'm at a place where I am comfortable just adding extra things and knowing when to stop because they can, you know, there is such a thing as too much, it was just really nice drawing him again. Drawing the feet felt weird because I feel weird drawing feet, <laughs> but um, they turned out all right, I think. Um, I think I was pleasantly, well, pleasantly, I was surprised when I drew the original one that his feet turned out okay, like they came out in a pose that I thought felt natural. So I basically just copied it again this time. Um, it's super basic. I obviously, I didn't go into detail with the toes because that would feel kind of weird. After the sketch is done, I went in and just lined everything, which really helped neaten it up as well, um, which will help later because I think 
watercolours usually hold a lot of the pencil marks in so I really didn't want that um, and then I rubbed out all of the pencil stuff previously and I was just going to go straight in and start colouring but then some rational part of my brain kicked in and was like you're going to make a mistake if you do that so I decided to plan a little bit of the colours on one of these separate pieces because I wanted to add a base layer of colours I've seen people do this before, um, Sketches of Shea has a really great video explaining how different base colours can affect your drawings and paintings and stuff. Yeah, that's why I wanted to add one here, and I'm really glad I did. I'm going to say the word I say all the time, but it really helps make everything cohesive. Um, and adding the gradient helped me, I think, I think it helped the picture have more depth. Having it be darker at the bottom, I think it creates this... 3D feeling, like a, an actual physical space. I, I'm not sure how to explain it, I just think if it hadn't been darker at the bottom it would have looked a lot more flat despite adding like shading and stuff. It also, I really like the effect it has because a lot of the colours that I was placing I liked obviously otherwise I wouldn't place them, but then having the background colours coming through and changing them just gave it like a really nice effect like I feel like a lot of the colours have like slight gradients in them from where they've mixed with the colour underneath like his trousers they came out a very different colour to what I was expecting like obviously it did mean that some things were a bit unpredictable and I couldn't plan as much as I wanted but because I was using the original picture again for most of the colours as well um, it wasn't that much of a problem, but I do really like how all the colours came out different to what I was expecting. Um, like, a couple times I do think it was a little detrimental, like, his blue shading on his cloak looks a little grey, which I'm not sure why, probably because it became a sort of purple. And I'm just really, <laughs> I really get nervous when it comes to using watercolours for some reason, and I do usually go for muddier versions. So I really was trying my best to have saturated things here, but as you can see with like the shading and a lot of the clothes items, I think it does come out looking a little too desaturated. It also means that I get really nervous adding shading because I don't know how to do it with like, I don't want it to be more saturated than the base colour of the item itself. So yeah, I just really struggle with it. but. I am quite happy with how this all worked out, like one thing that watercolours have going for it is you can add like a wash over the top of everything to create shadows and it looks alright I think. Like I do that with the the cloths on the back of the camel um, and you know they do actually look quite vibrant now I'm looking at them, they don't look as desaturated as I thought they did. Um, but yeah, it's just nice, it, like I do always get worried that you're gonna smudge everything beneath it, but so far it's been fine, I think. Anyway, so I was I started adding shading here um, because he is supposed to be under an umbrella and I painted over his face as well, which I was very, very, very nervous about because like I was quite happy with where his face shading was at. So I was thinking I'm going to ruin it if I just paint over it, but it really did need to be in shadow. I really wanted it to have a sort of 3D space feeling and it turned out okay. I wasn't too mad about it. I did have to go in and colour some things again because I had lost a little bit of the depth, but you know, I think it ended up fine. It definitely needed it because otherwise it just looks like he was separate from everything. Um, and I, yeah, I just really like it because he is under the umbrella. It creates an interesting shape, an interesting image, space, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but um, I am glad that I went for this rather than the other option just because the nighttime option would have included, well, nighttime, <laughs> and I think I would have messed that up. I might try it again in the future, but um, he has his staff 
um, which has like a glowing ball on it. And he also would have had more glowing orbs placed on the camel elsewhere. And I think getting the look of them actually glowing and shining and casting a light would have been way too confusing for me. I'm happy I revisited this character. He is quite interesting. I don't do much world building for my characters in general, but um, I did do a little for him at one point, not too much, but I really liked, there, there was an idea with moths at one point because he uses like lanterns that create a smoke and he uses his glowing orbs. And I really liked at one point there was an idea that the orbs and the smoke kind of attract the, the moths because the idea of the smoke was that they were meant to like deter monsters and creatures because they're in a desert, so at night and stuff. There isn't supposed to be that much landscape to keep them protected. It is supposed to be very flat and open. So the idea was that they had these like lanterns to, so that they could see but the smoke was supposed to deter monsters and kind of be like a warding but I kind of liked the idea that it didn't really work on the moths and that's why sometimes he has like lots of little moths that follow him around and I even had an idea at one point that he encounters like this giant moth that is like so entranced by the smoke that he kind of poses a threat like even though these moths are very passive creatures and they're not supposed to be dangerous at all. When you encounter one that big, it is going to be dangerous, you know, because he wants that smoke. Um, and I kind of want to touch upon that again. I could do some world building. Like I do have ideas that I think could be good. Um, and especially since it is my own made up world with made up creatures, I could do whatever I want with it. But um, anyway, I could probably go on a really long tangent i think i've gone on long enough um and i haven't spoken about the painting itself in a bit so you've seen the whole process now um i'm very happy with how it ended up the paper itself seemed perfect like most watercolor papers that i've used in the past have been very very textured i understand there are different um versions of watercolors there's like hot pressed and cold pressed I don't actually know what version this is. So I don't know exactly what type that is. I will ask, um, I'll ask my representative um, and I will put it in the description below what exactly what type of watercolor paper that is. But it, it's really nice from what I could tell. There wasn't like any feathering and the vapor didn't, the vapor? <laughs> the paper didn't warp too much. As you can see, there's like a little bit of bending, um, which is to be expected because I put so much on it but it's like really nicely flat otherwise. And a lot that I've used in the past gets warped very easily. Um, and I don't know if that's just because I've been using bad brands in the past, but um, this stuff turned out really nice. And I do really like the lack of texture. Um, it makes it easier to draw on, especially if you are drawing like I did, where you, you know, you sketch it out and stuff on the paper. When it is smoother like this, I find it easier to remove the lines afterwards to rub them out whereas on the textured stuff I always find that um, there is usually some remnant of pencil left which can muddy up the painting. I'm very happy with how this turned out it is very different to what I usually do it looks very comic-y and like illustration um, and I yeah I'm really happy with how different it looks to the original yeah because I I still really like the original but it is definitely way desaturated um you can kind of see because i was mentioning it earlier i i struggled with saturated colors um with a lot of things actually i i just couldn't do saturated stuff in the past and i've been trying to include more brighter vibrant colors um so i think that's something you can very very definitely see it's different i'm happy i managed to keep like the core elements the same obviously his top is different because i did also want to implement the newer changes that I'd made but um, I think it's kind of just a cute comparison to see how different they are and yet how similar. <laughs> that sounds so so corny and reflective <laughs> um, but yeah I, I'm just really happy with how it turned out. These paints I love. They have made me want to do so much more watercolour and like typically watercolour isn't one that I reach for because of the whole washy feeling but they're so vibrant vibrated <laughs> they're so vibrant 
that um it just gives me like a whole different opinion on them. I have actually the <laughs> the Pokemon down here triggered something within me that if you um were present um on my Instagram at the time, I've started making a video for these Pokemon um where I'm drawing a bunch of your favourite Pokemon in this simple style. I think I've got about 90 to do and I'm like not even halfway through at this point. So that is what my next video or one of the next videos when I get around to finishing it will be about. So keep an eye out for that. But I want to say a huge thank you to Paul Rubens for letting me try out both their watercolour paints and paper. Also a huge thank you to everyone who made it this far in the video. I hope you <laughs> enjoyed it. And also I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreons. Dispy, Megan Palmer, Grimclaw, Non Toxic, Saint Nix, LP, Kira May, K, Joanna, Sir Studdalot, Mila, VB, Pretty Rotten, Crescent Frog, Joanna Snake Moon, and Humble Frogs. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I really, really appreciate it. I will see you in the next video, which should hopefully be soon.